lastly here wrapping up with um, our universe. Plants. Plants are very, very, very interesting, are they not? And new studies are telling us that plants detect vibrations to survive. That's how they find water. Now, we're getting more and more familiar with the secret life of plants. Um, as Bill Nye has said, has a way of putting it, in some ways, plants make all of the air that we breathe, and they make all of the food that we eat. And without plants, there would be no animals on Earth, not even us. How could we survive without plants? They make, you know, the, aren't, they have a lot to do with the oxygen and the carbon dioxide that this whole exchange um, we owe to them. You may have heard that many things people say about caring for plants as well. Some buy books to learn about plants so that they can nurture their plants. Some talk to their plants. They say that that helps them grow. Um, I've heard people feel the leaves to see what's going on or some just watch from a distance. They're like, you know what, it's going to grow <laughs> or it's not. But many people have found that playing music to plants may make them grow better or faster, which naturally scientists, when they hear that, they're like, it's ridiculous, that makes no sense. They don't have ears, they can't hear music. So how could that be? But with more and more research, we're finding that some of these people were right. Something fishy is going on with, with plants and vibrations and sound. So Monica Gagliano, she is an evolutionary biologist at the University of Western Australia. She did a recent research study um, and she discovered that plants use sounds of nature. They most certainly do. Like buzzing of an insect or the sounds of liquid rushing through a pipe. They use this to find water and to survive. Now, just to give you a breakdown of this study, they placed pea seedlings in a pot um, in an upside down um, Y formation, something like that, upside down Y, with an arm for each pot, right, in position in each tray. So with, e with an arm tray, um, <clears throat> they had water and a coiled plastic tube with water flowing through it. Now, the other, the other arm consisted just of soil. It was just soil, there was no water in there. Now, the study found that no matter if it was easily accessible or hidden inside the tube, um, making it difficult for them to get to, the roots grew towards the arm of the pipe with the fluid. No matter what, basically, so they, I believe they were saying that that's three separate things there. Either it was, it, was, it was full of fluid, there was a tube making it a little more difficult for them, or it was just soil. Most of these plants, they say, they went to where, they went to where the fluid was, to where the water was, even if it was difficult to get to. Gagliano says they just knew the water was there even if the only thing to detect was the sound of it flowing inside of the pipe. Furthermore, when the seedlings have the opportunity between the flowing tube and the soil that has moistened, their roots preferred the latter. They actually preferred the moistened soil than to go through that tube. Um, to get their nutrients. According to Gagliano, when the water was far away, the plants used sound waves to guide them there. And when it was easily accessible, they followed moisture granites to hone in on their target. That's amazing to me. What she believes, the reason why she believes that is, and I'm going to read um, from a quote directly, because water is essential to life, Organisms have evolved a wide range of strategies to cope with water limitations, including actively searching for their preferred moisture levels to avoid dehydration. Plants use moisture granites to direct their roots through the soil once a water source is detected. But how they first detect the source is unknown. We found that roots were able to locate a water source by sensing the vibrations generated by water moving inside pipes, even if the absence of substrate moisture, even in that absence, crazy. Our results also showed that the presence of noise affected the abilities of roots to perceive and respond correctly to the surrounding soundscape. So now from an article uh, from the Washington Post, can plants hear in a steady vibrations prompt them to boost their defenses? 
it's similar to how our own immune system works. They were describing that this is very similar to us, what they do with these vibrations. An initial experience with insects or bacteria can help plants defend themselves better in future attacks by the same predator. So while a mustard plant may not respond the first time it encounters a hungry caterpillar, the next time it will, it will up the concentration of defense chemicals um, in its system that turn its once delicious leaves into an unsavory toxic meal. So he believes, um, I'm sorry, they believe the same applies for these plants in water. So maybe it wasn't something they were always able to do, but as it becomes more and more of a challenge, once they, once they know where this is versus that, or once it becomes something that they had, that they dealt with, they naturally found ways to find water. And that's how they describe it. It's not maybe maybe it's not so much can they hear, but you know, are they just figuring out, of course, survival? They're just they're just making their way through. Um, another thing here from scientificamerican.com, another hint that plants can hear comes from the phenomenon of buzz pollination, in which a bee buzzing in a, at a particular frequency has been shown to stimulate pollen release. Other ex experiments have found that sounds can lead to hormonal changes in plants, influence their oxygen intake or uptake, and change their growth rates. Michael Schwoner, a bio biologist at the University of Griffswald in Germany, um, he has <clears throat> he who was not involved in any of this research, he believes that plants have organs that can perceive noise. Sound vibrations could trigger a response of the plant via mechnoreceptors. These could be very fine, hairy structures, anything that could work like a membrane. That's what Michael Schroner believes is happening with these plants. He believes that they have these little, like, membrane um, receptors, much like, you know, insects do. Um, that's how they get around. He believes that plants have these as well, and that's how they're able to, you know, perceive the water or perceive the vibration or, I guess, read the vibration, right, so that they can see where it's guiding them. All of this is very, very interesting, and I have a feeling that this has on, honestly been discussed for uh, quite some time, for, for quite a long time now, even... Um, even before these recent studies, people have always made connections between these plants and vibrations and sound and what exactly is going on with all of it. Um, but I think that it's amazing and it goes to show you that we are a huge universe with so many things in between. There, there are no limits to what we could do. Even plants can listen to the sounds of water to find their way through. So, my believers, I encourage you guys to continue on, keep pushing, keep fighting, keep researching. And you know where to find us, believe.love, believe.com, I'm sorry, youtube.com, believe loves you, as well as uh, for my Apple users, believe iTunes.com, and for Android, believe Android.com. Thanks again. It's been a wonderful time. See you back.